Дуже дякую. А... Thank you very much. Пане президенте. Dear Charles, dear President, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and the presidents and leaders of the European countries, I have to thank you personally for your unwavering support of our country and our aspirations, our aspirations to live in the United Free Europe. I would like to repeat these words again in free and united Europe. And maybe they might sound a bit routine and familiar, but that means something very different for us. And I would like to tell you maybe one story, one story which might be quite important in our everyday life on our continent. And each of the stories we have uh, like that means that uh, sometimes our freedom is jeopardized. Quite recently, I've spoken to the president of Moldova, uh, Mrs. Sandu, and I have informed her that we have intercepted the plan of uh, the destruction of Moldova by the Russian intelligence. Uh, this document shows who, when, and how is going to break the democracy of Moldova and establish the control over Moldova. And I had no doubt at the moment I received this document and when I understood where this document came from, I immediately warned uh, Moldova about these threats to protect Moldova. And I'm sure that all of you would have done the same. And we don't know whether Moscow indeed uh, gave an order to follow that plan against Moldova. But we have intercepted this plan. We recognized it. And we have seen it as a very similar plan they try to implement against Ukraine or other countries in Europe. There is nothing new. And I'm sure you have seen the attempts of the Russian subversive activity quite a lot. We all are protecting Europe against the regime which wants to destroy the freedom of Europe, which wants to be the authoritarian uh, leader on our continent. We have got not just a territory with resources as they see it, we see it as a European home. And Russia tries to control this territory and exploit the resources and the nations. The aggression and indeed these, these strikes of the Russian disinformation or Russian aviation, the subversive activity, the dirty money of Russia, the influence of and cyber attacks, these are quite a lot of factors, too many I think. Russia has got a significant toolbox, and this toolkit is not just against the Baltic countries, Poland, or Ukraine, or other countries. We have seen it in the Balkans, and unfortunately, we can see it again and again uh, in other regions of Europe. If somebody in Moscow decides that, just decides or wants to, I would like to stress again, wants to have yet another plan, uh, the plan of new aggression, be it the hybrid aggression or direct aggression, whether we will always have the time to defend ourselves, that's my question. That's why we all need to have speedy and reliable decisions. Dear colleagues, in the European Parliament and in the European Union, everybody can feel the weight of uh, respect of Robert Schuman and Jean Monnet. And we understand that it was their leadership that created our freedom and created Europe 
as a united continent to implement their dream. At the moment, our unity, our freedom requires one more component. One component without each, everything else is fragile. That is security. And if we can reach this security in Europe and guarantee it and achieve a long-term security, then I can promise you that your names will be in the history of Europe together with the names Schumann and Monet. The European Union is heading this way. Already the fundamental steps have been made, but it's a long road, and I know that all of you all of us have got enough strength to do this. I'm very grateful to you all during, that during this horrific year, uh, the year of aggression of Russia, Europe becomes stronger, becomes stronger thanks to your personal decisions. And even when there were doubts and there were perhaps some discussions, you still managed to find the opportunity to make those decisions together, strong decisions indeed. Thank you so much for this. And I want to thank you for the understanding that Europe should not have the grey zones, that our whole continent should be open to the European destiny should not have uh, the destabilization. And we understand that the unity of Europe is the fundamental way to security. Uh, free Europe cannot be imagined without the free Ukraine. And I'm very grateful to you for the preparation and giving Ukraine the state, the candidate status. I'm very grateful that we are looking at the positive results of our transformation together. Thank you so much that we started the negotiations on membership to the EU, and that will become one more step, one more fundamental brick in our joint security. The European Union has given this support, which is consistent and large scale for the first time in history. We are very grateful to you for this. We feel that this security interaction has created a historical example for any aggressor. The example why the aggression of, against European countries should not take place. That's why this aggression should fail as soon as possible. The stronger we are together, the stronger we have the real European values uh, going back to and covering the territory of Ukraine, which is now occupied, the stronger we will have the European peace. I want to thank you again for understanding us, for supporting us, and understanding how much we need the possibilities that we need, the artillery guns, the munitions, the modern tanks, the long-range missiles and modern fighter jets. We are very grateful to you for giving us this military support. We have to enhance the dynamics of our cooperation. We have to do it faster than the aggressor that tries to mobilize its potential. I'm very grateful to all the European nations that understand that our our brave army, our brave soldiers uh, are fighting against the terror of Russia with your support. And we are talking about the aggression not just against Ukraine but against Europe. I'm very grateful to you for the economic support and the energy solidarity as well so that you help us to manage the to preserve our financial and social stability in Ukraine, even in such difficult situation, in the situation of the large-scale war. Thank you so much for the packet, all the packages of assistance, of financial and social assistance, because that's all about security, not just security of Ukraine, but the security of the European Union. And we are very pleased that Russia cannot weaponize energy anymore. Uh, and uh, at last, Europe has seen how Russia treats energy as a weapon. 
And we understand that Kremlin only sees the energy as an opportunity of influence and fight and wage war. I'm very grateful that gradually uh, you stopped Kremlin from these aggressive ambitions. Thank you very much for your sanction packages. Whether they have limited the Russian aggressive potential, we don't know yet. This is just the beginning. We can analyze the result of the sanctions, and we can see that we have to be more proactive so that they don't have enough capacity to destabilize other countries or provoke the crisis, any crisis. We are talking about the migration crisis or energy crisis or grain, indeed. You witnessed the food crisis, the radiation crisis, etc. Let's just think about it. Let's just think about the fact that Russia has created a threat of the radiation catastrophe in Europe and the Russian nuclear energy is still free from the global sanctions. Do you think it's fair? We feel there are still, there are still steps which need to be done. For example, sanctions against the drone industry and the missile industry of Russia against the IT sector of the aggression, aggressive country because the drone terror will become and remain a threat until we destroy the source of this threat. And I'm absolutely sure that in Europe you have to make this decisive step. And the last thing I wanted to say, Europe has to be just. And of course, it's impossible to live without justice. You don't see the future without justice. We need to create the tribunal against Russia. We have to have the repatri or indeed the compensation mechanism so that uh, the, there'll be responsibility. Uh, and because the Russian terrorists have to understand what they've done from destroying uh, the MH17 in 2014 in Donbass, in Donbass, and we are talking about thousands of victims of civilians and our soldiers who are fighting this Russian terror now. Uh, everybody demands justice, uh, and we feel that will be an important part of the security foundation of peaceful Europe. Dear colleagues, everything I've mentioned today indeed involves our, is involved in our formula of peace or are directly connected with our formula of peace. Ukraine never wanted this war. Ukraine never wanted any war, in fact. Ukraine never provoked, and we always, always tried to preserve peace. I'm sure you know it all very well. History knows it very well. And we know that our formula of peace has massive potential. And also, we are united. We have got huge potential in that. And I would like to address you all and ask you, please use this potential. Europe is free, Europe will be free, and Europe is united. And I'm absolutely sure we have to do everything so that Europe remains united and supporting independent Ukraine, independent Moldova, and I'm absolutely sure independent Georgia and the Baltic states, Poland, and other countries, other states which are the members of our European family. We have to guarantee the security to all the European countries. Thank you very much. Glory to Ukraine.